What's up, and welcome to another episode of Evie's Review! So on this episode, I'm gonna talk about my new little invention. It comes from deep inside. This, my friends, is the plaster. So what is a plaster? Well, there's this little chip called the PLA, which stands for Programmable Logic Array. And it is often a source of frustration among Commodore 64 enthusiasts. The reason is the original chip would tend to get very hot and kind of have an internal meltdown. So it is one of the most common replacements for the Commodore. I know that Adrian Black recently did a video about the GAL PLA, and there is one cosmetic difference between the plaster and the GAL PLA. If you'll notice, it's uh, a lot more like the size of a real chip, this being one of the original chips. So check it out side by side. Very similar footprint, and I can even demonstrate what the difference is between having no PLA. The black screen. Having the original PLA. Not a black screen. And a bad PLA would be pretty much the same as having no PLA. Or it might exhibit some weird pattern on the screen, that's possible too. But here is the plaster. So I've got the plaster in a nice little round pin socket, and that protects the pins on the plaster itself. And if you don't have a socket on your machine already, it gives you something to put into the machine. And lastly, if you have a socket that doesn't have these round pins, this will act as a converter of sorts. And so, I don't know if you can see, but this machine has a straight pin socket, and this works great to protect the plaster and to make better contact. So pop that baby in, give it a whirl, and you can see that the machine works fine. Now, a lot of people want to know, well, does this PLA work with Super Zaxxon? Well, it does, but I'll have you know I'm sort of cheating because a computer with backbit will probably work with Super Zaxxon even with some other PLA, but I know that it works great with the plaster. Now, another piece of software that people complain about with replacement PLAs is the Epix Fastload, but here, look, I've got Epix Fastload and it works with the plaster. And that's with Backfit as well. And I'm sure those visiting my channel are well familiar with the Backfit cartridge. Sometimes, believe it or not, I operate mine without the case while I'm developing, but it's always nice to have the case. And if we ever get out of this pandemic, the case version is great for presentations. So you'll probably see me next year at festivals like the Vintage Computer Festival, CRX, or various other retro festivals that I haven't been to yet. So I bet you're wondering, why would I get a plaster if my PLA already works fine? So here's a little neat thing. Uh, well, first of all, what's this blue jumper over here? So if I take the blue jumper out, you can see that plaster doesn't work at all. If I put it in setting number one, it adds one delay to the cast RAM pin. And what cast RAM is, it's the column address select of the computer's memory, and cast RAM is the output of the PLA, where just plain old CAS is the input. And on the original PLA, there was a very specific delay, and I believe it was caused by doing some kind of reverse polarity trick with that specific pin. And so the plaster kind of emulates that, 
by introducing a five nanosecond pin delay. And I've actually got two of them. And it's configurable with the jump cord. So for some reason, plaster doesn't just work on your system. You can try these two additional settings, which might actually make it work, especially on weird boards like the KU something something. And I'm really looking forward to some of my users who have multiple commodores to get a plaster and try it on all their machines and even try it with the original Super Zaxxon or Epic's Fast Load cartridges. I'm pretty sure it will work, but I would like to get confirmation. So now this yellow jumper, if I move this up and then turn on the machine, you'll see it's detected that plaster is there. So if this is a fully compatible PLA replacement, how does the computer know the difference? So this special jumper, what it does, it's a kernel override. So this actually makes the product in my last video, the corn bit, obsolete. So when I made the corn bit, people were saying, well, that's great that you can change the kernel, but what if I wanted to change the kernel on the fly whenever I wanted to, which is something you could already do with Easy Flash and the Ultimate 2. But what about Backbit? Unlike the Ultimate 2 and the Easy Flash, which has essentially a hack which pulls down the address pins on the CPU, Plaster works by going one step before the CPU and telling the computer to instead access the cartridge when it would have originally accessed the kernel ROM chip. So instead of hacking the CPU to trick the CPU into getting memory from the cartridge, it just overrides the PLA. And you might say that eases some pressure on the CPU. I don't know that electrically it makes much difference. Another cool thing I have is the SX kernel. So look, now I just installed an SX kernel on my Commodore. And then the default is actually, see this back bit kernel. And this is the other cool thing. Using the plaster with the kernel override, you can get the latest back bit kernel hacks that I've done that help certain programs load. Programs that use kernel serial routine don't ordinarily work with Backbit. I am going to do some work to make those serial routines work perfectly with Backbit. Now let me show you the process of actually installing a kernel on the Backbit with Plaster. So here I've got the GS kernel. So I press F7, I say use this kernel, yes. And then I go to F1, kernel, and I choose GS, the one I just added. And then I press run stop to go to basic, and here's the GS kernel. I don't know why you'd use that when you have backbit other than the fact that it just looks cool. And then let's say I don't like GS kernel, I can remove that kernel from the list. And now I just have the other kernels that were in there previously. So while I'm at it, I just thought I would give you a little playtest of Green Beret using the Genesister and this aftermarket Genesis controller. So check this out. And meanwhile, if the plaster is something you're interested in, it's available for sale on the Backbit store. That's store.backbit.io. So my processing time for new orders is currently one to two weeks. If I get a ton of orders, that could go up. But uh, my backlog is mostly clear since the mad rush in April when Jan Beta talked about the backbit. So thanks to Jan Beta for that. That helped introduce about twice as many people to the backbit cartridge. So I've now got about 300 backbits out there in the wild. And as always, I always welcome suggestions of what I could improve in the backbit firmware. And sometimes you have to bug me a little bit or tell your friends to gang up on me because there's a lot of potential feature requests that I could work on. I'm looking into doing an 80 column mode on the Commodore 128, and I've gotten a lot of requests for transferring files over USB, so you don't have to take the SD card in and out all the time. But like I said, peer pressure is the best motivation to get me to work on specific features. 
Anyway, if you're curious about plaster, you have any more questions, feel free to write some comments below or visit me on the Backbit forum. That's forum.backbit.io. And one last major announcement, I'm going through the final revisions of my in-circuit chip tester. So stay tuned for a video about that. And little backstory, the whole reason that I was working on these chip replacements, the corn bit and now the plaster, is because I needed to fix some old Commodores and I needed these replacement chips. So if you know me, I'd rather build something than buy something. But now that I've got replacement ROM chips and a replacement PLA, now's the time to finish up my chip tester. So an upcoming video will be using the chip tester to actually repair these machines that have been sitting here for a long time and the ones you've seen in an earlier video. So anyway, enjoy this little experience of playing Green Beret with the Genesister and I'll see you next time on Evie's Review!